Salut à toutes et à tous et bienvenue dans Story Series saison 3, épisode 6. Cette semaine, on se plonge avec délectation dans la filmographie d'un acteur caméléon au charme fou, visage familier des séries Phil et Muse de David Lynch dans Dune et Blue Velvet, Ladies and Gentlemen, Kyle MacLachlan. I have no idea where this will lead us. But I have a definite feeling it will be a place both wonderful and strange. Le 8 avril 1990, le monde découvrait les méandres mystérieux de la ville de Twin Peaks, ses tartes aux cerises. Cherry pie. Best in the Tri Counties. Son café chaud. Damn good coffee. And hot. Et ses meurtres abominables à travers le regard pétillant de l'agent spécial Del Cooper. Et comme on le dit dans la Red Room, c'est la meilleure série du monde. Alléluia. Alléluia. En quelques minutes et un coup de dictaphone à la fidèle assistante de Cooper. Diane, 11:30 a.m. February 24th. Kyle MacLachlan marquait l'histoire de la télévision et embarquait dans une carrière florissante croisant tous les genres et tous les écrans. 30 ans et près de 80 rôles plus tard, l'aura de Kyle MacLachlan n'a, comme lui, pas pris une ride, comme l'a prouvé sa venue au Festival du cinéma américain des champs élysées devant un parterre d'adorateurs en transe. Une masterclass pleine d'amour et de nostalgie précédée d'un tête-à-tête détendu avec Vue sur Paris. Now I need to see if you actually caught that mosquito or not. Did it actually? I did. did. I do all the time. You got the fight. <laughs> got it. I've read something that surprises me. You've oh. done 41 movies, 19 TV series, and you still have this really? fear. Really? Yes. Oh my God. You say you still have this fear of the first day, the day you, you start a new role. Am I going to be disappointing to anyone? Yeah. I don't believe this. I think that's pretty common among actors. I think if you ask actors, um, I've heard it before, they say whenever they start something new, you have this little uh, uh, fear that you, you're not going to be able to remember what you're supposed to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, after the first minute, you're fine and everything falls back into place. You have a message for anyone, Michael? A personal message? I don't know if my wife is watching this, but um, I want her to know that I'm thinking about her and the baby she's going to have. And if this doesn't, um, if this doesn't go the way I want it to go, then I want, I want her to know that I, I would like to have spent more time with her and. I would like to have seen my son. Nowadays, it's very common that actors from cinema go to television. Everybody does that. But yeah. in 1990, when you did, it was really unusual. Was would you little, have done yeah. it if it wasn't for David Lynch anyway? Were you interested in television or? Not really. I mean, I kind of, part of me went, just kind of went to where the work was, where I could find work, you know? So, um, but it had so much to do with David Lynch and, and the idea that he was coming to television, which you're right, at the time it was very unexpected, particularly someone like David Lynch, where you felt like, well, suddenly his art is going to be available to a much larger audience yeah. because of television. And we all got a big kick out of that because the idea that suddenly David Lynch was going to be beamed into people's homes, you know, the, the anarchist in all of us was like, oh, we're taking over the world, you know. Um, And he created something, he and Mark Frost, of course, because they worked together on it, created something really special with Twin Peaks and really grabbed the world unexpectedly, I think. Cooper, you remind me today of a small Mexican chihuahua. Can I speak to you a moment in private, Coop? Of course, Gordon. Harry, can we use your office? You might ask the sheriff if we could use his office. Go right ahead. 
Follow me, Gordon. All of us that were working on the on the television show when we signed up didn't anticipate that it was something that was going to go further than one one episode, really. Yeah. Um, kind of a movie of the week type of structure, which they had at that time. So we were all surprised. You didn't have the social medias and everything at that time. So did you have any conscious of what was happening around the show that everybody was watching it, talking about it all the time? Um, not really, you know, only yeah. because when we did the pilot um, and then we showed it to ABC, um, it had not aired yet, they'd yeah. seen it. And they decided to go forward with seven episodes uh, before even putting it on the air. So we had to um, film all seven and finish and then they went to air. So we didn't know as we were filming, usually in the process of making television, of course, there's an overlap. Yes. We had no idea how it was going to be received. So it was a great surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Diane, it's 4.10 in the afternoon at the scene of the crime. Here's something we haven't seen before. A mound of dirt approximately a foot and a half in diameter. On the top is a gold necklace with a gold heart. Correction, half a gold heart. At the base of the mound of dirt is a torn piece of newsprint written with the words which appear to be in blood, fire, walk with me. When you work for TV, you experiment something that is weird, which is directors change all the time and yeah. you have to get used to them. What do you like most? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the thing about Twin Peaks, which was great, the return is that it's David Lynch directed every yeah. episode, which is kind of amazing. Um, I think it's a world record or something like that. He certainly, yeah, <laughs> it certainly seemed like that to me. I mean, he really worked hard. He was there every day, every frame, creative and, and focused, and he knew exactly what he wanted. It, it was remarkable, I think. I don't know how he did it. But in a more traditional setting, yeah, you do have a um, situation where you have different directors coming in of different energies. You know, it's, everybody's kind of on the same page pretty quickly. There's nothing that's, that's so unusual or unexpected that you can't adapt. Yes. Yeah, it's when, pretty easy. When you do a show like Desperate Housewife, when you do many, many episodes, do you feel like in the end the character is more yours than the director's because you know him much better than That's him? That's true. The nice thing about that with, with Housewives was we had, there were really two, two main directors um, that would just kind of alternate back and forth. But you do feel like the character is your own and that um, and the writers too, I mean they factor in so heavily into that process and they're all c continually creating and pushing the character in directions that you know as an actor you either are happy about or you're maybe less happy about yeah. but you you know you have to make it work. Well I like the energy of television. Yeah. Sometimes film, uh, although I haven't, I think more and more films are adapting to the to the speed of television um, uh, but a lot of times in films you spend a lot of time just sort of sitting around. <laughs> Waiting. Yeah it's kind of boring you know and um, and, and trying to hold your concentration and keep your concentration can be challenging. But I think most of the films that I've done recently have, have been more of an independent nature. And so they don't spend a whole lot of time rigging stuff and setting stuff up. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it goes pretty quickly. And then you have Steven Soderbergh filming on iPhone for yeah, that was really iFlying Bird. Yeah, that was interesting. That was challenging. I need us to be one big family again. Football is fun, but it don't sell sneakers. To move merch and inspire rap lyrics, they need your services. I had never worked with Steven. We knew each other for years and years and years, and so finally he did this High Flying Bird, yes. which was a beautiful story, really compelling and, 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 and intricate and, um, and challenging for the audience to sort of follow all the movements of what was going on. And he would literally set up his little iPhone and he would just put it on a little tripod, like one of those little tripods. Yes. And he would set it here on the side, and he'd get the frame right, and then he would hit the same, and be like, okay. And he'd just kind of walk away, and he'd sort of sit there, and so we'd do a scene, you know? Kind of like you do in your living room. <laughs> yeah, is it disturbing for you, this kind of uh, No, it, was a, it, was, it took a minute to sort of go, oh, okay, you know, and then, but it's pretty much the same. You're basically just working off the other actor, having yeah. a conversation, um, and how it's being recorded is, um, different, I mean, today. We're hanging, <laughs> hanging here, we've got the handheld going on, we've got a second one over here. So it just depends on how it's being recorded, but the, but the process of the, the dialogue and the interaction is the same. Yeah. And when I look at your, at your filmography and everything you've done, you are really a surprising man. You never know what Thanks, you're going to do next. I'm a surprising next. man. That's no, you are. <laughs> if you see all of the roles you've taken, yeah. it's a, a villain with Eli Roth, and then the seducer, and then 
like you do everything. What does it take to make you interested in a in project? That's a good question. You know, I've never said no to something because I felt like it was outside of what I could do. Yeah. Um, and I think um, I look at all of those as, as, as opportunities to try, just to see if I can do it. And there's a lot of things that go into a decision, of course. Yes. You know, quality and director and, and where I am in my career and my family now and how it's going to impact my family. But I think ultimately it comes down to whether or not, as you read something, you are like, oh, I kind of have a good feeling about this. You know, it really starts with a feeling. Or, oh, I think I have, I think I could contribute to this. Or, oh, I'd like that challenge. I'd like to take that challenge. Or, I'd like to work in that medium. I'm about to start something for CBS. I'm going to yeah. do a half hour sitcom, live, ah, taped on I love you in sitcoms. Oh, okay. I love you in Portland, yeah. Oh, thank you. It's kind of going to be a little bit like that, a little bit like How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. But it's a live audience, taped in front of a live audience, which I've never done before. So, and I'm excited and nervous and, uh, and you know, to try something different. So I never shied away from, from that. Yeah. Stephen Frost, senior attending. I'm Dr. Carol Kenny, intern. Oh, it's you. You're that intern. Yes, I'm the old intern, your local circus freak. <laughs> Do you ever wonder why did they call me for that? Yes, all yes. the time, yeah. Do you ask? I don't know why Oliver Stone cast me in the doors. I really don't. I'm like, why you cast me as Ray Manzeri? He's like, I, I'm like, I'm not really, I don't really look like Ray. I don't really act like Ray. But he was like, nah, he just, I don't know why he cast me. He never told me. You know, but I guess you put the glasses on and the, the yeah. mud chops and the long hair. And like, well, yeah, I, I guess I sort of look like him. I, I, I so enjoyed that movie. And I enjoyed working with Val and, and even Oliver. Working with Oliver, he's challenging. But, you know, he, he's, trying to give, he's trying to create something amazing. You don't fear away from challenges. Not so much. No, I enjoy them. I do. You seem always happy and always I am, positive and always. Yeah, uh... yeah. I mean, I'm very grateful for what I do. I love what I do. I don't really know why I like what I do, but I do. Um, <laughs> it's one of those weird things. Where it's, and I've, I certainly feel like I've found what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. You know? And when you start out in the beginning, you, I don't know if I knew. I mean, acting wasn't something that I was grew up going, oh, I'm going to be an actor. I was like, well, you know, I like it. It's kind of fun. But it really wasn't until uh, college and then I, in my training and I began to, again, to really kind of dig down into it that I began to go, oh, yeah, this is really something that I like and I think this is my, I think this is my calling, you know, yes. call like that. And uh, there were some times when I wasn't sure, you know, in those <laughs> early years. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I've been very fortunate to have the success I've had. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you nice very, to, very nice much. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, Thank a you. pleasure. A pleasure. Don't steal the mic. That's too late. Take me with me. <laughs> Harry, it's Cooper. Meet me for breakfast, 7 a.m. in the hotel lobby. I know who killed Laura Palmer. No, it can wait till morning. Story Series est terminée. La semaine prochaine, on quitte Twin Peaks, direction le Maine, si cher au roi des librairies, Stephen King, pour analyser comment les séries traitent ces histoires. Allez, à la semaine prochaine.